Ethan Strauss uh, is the host of the Warriors NBA podcast called House of Strauss. He covered him for years. He wrote The Victory Machine, The Making and Unmaking of the Warriors Dynasty. So when you read this, you read these stories about KD to the Warriors, and I said yesterday, listen, if I could steal him, if it was Wiseman and Wigan for KD, I'd take him. But you know this organization well. You and KD had your battles. Are you rolling your eyes at these reports, or do you think there's something, Ethan, to them? I'm not rolling my eyes at the reports, right? Because a lot of people did that in 2016, if you remember. It just seemed like it was too decadent for KD to come to the Warriors, (laughs) just like it is now. But I'll tell you what's funny about it, Colin. This is the one situation in basketball where it would represent a maximizing from both sides of winning a title, and yet none of us think it will happen. Every other situation, we're thinking about how do the Lakers maximize their chance of winning a title? How do the Nets maximize their chance of winning a title? From both sides, how does LeBron get a title? This is the one situation where we look at it and we go, this is probably the best path for KD winning another title. It's probably the best path for the Warriors. It always worked when he was on the court with them until he got hurt. And yet, Colin, it just feels like it feels like getting remarried to your second wife. It's awkward. It's weird. Nobody wants it. It's not good show business. And those factors seem like they outweigh the factors of winning a title. As much as we say it's all about winning a title, some titles matter more than others. You know, when he decides, I, I said this, there are there are franchise players that you would build around. Giannis, Magic, Bird, Steph Curry. There's a personality, Tim Duncan. D. Wade. And it's not always just talent. It usually is. And then there are guys that I would call franchise enhancers. Kawhi Leonard, A.D., Kevin Durant. Is that they're flighty, they're impulsive, they're often not, they keep things to themselves. I don't trust that I can build around them. I think K.D., by leaving the Nets abruptly, he's becoming a little Kawhi Leonard to me. Is that unfair? I don't think it's unfair, but we should remember that that's most superstars in the NBA now. I mean, there's one guy, one guy. There's If you want to be really in control of your basketball team, uh, your organization will have had to draft, to, had to have drafted Steph Curry in 2009. And maybe, maybe, maybe Giannis, right? Maybe Jokic. But for the most part, these superstars want what they want. They're not loyal to any situation. And it's really funny, Colin, to see Joe Sy. Uh, the owner of the Nets throw this tantrum, put his foot down, say, no, I don't want Kyrie. Well, what happens? Then KD wants out and he has to cater to KD. KD kind of called his bluff. You know, none of these owners are in control. It speaks to something about the NBA that a lot of fans don't like and some fans like, which is that it's a player's league. The players are in control. They are your boss. And you just have to hope You have a a once-in-a-generation superstar like a Steph Curry or a Tim Duncan because then you can build around, then you're allowed to do your job. Otherwise, your job is just placating the superstar, and that's how it goes. You know, you know the Warriors very well, um, and and we've said there's an argument they lost Gary Payton, who was a very valuable, versatile defender. Um, You know, Otto Porter, that's fine. That's not going to be a deal-breaker. Generally... Uh, I am a believer that even if you win a championship, uh, the Rams, for instance, they win a championship, they move off Robert Woods, they get Allen Robinson, they feel that's an upgrade at wide receiver, they get Bobby Wagner, uh, they had a, you know, they are not going to stand pat, they are going to make moves, and so with the Warriors, do you think in, in deep in the reservoir of Bob Myers and Steve Kerr, are they sitting there thinking, listen, we got a little lucky, Kawhi got hurt, AD LeBron got hurt. Or do you believe right now Kerr and Bob Myers think we don't need KD? We should be an overwhelming favorite next year. It's a great question. It's a great question. I don't know if Steve Kerr wants to go another round or two with KD. That was a story that had really run out between those two. He was taking shot after shot at Steve Kerr in those press conferences, mocking the idea of playing with joy, saying sarcastically, oh, we're supposed to play with joy. He was completely trying to subvert whatever Kerr was doing towards the end. So even if, and he would never say it publicly, but even if that would give the Warriors an edge, there's something called the iron law of institutions, Colin. We see it in sports all the time, which is that people care more about their power within an organization than the power and effectiveness of the organization. Nobody admits it, but we're all built that way. So I don't see Kerr wanting this. 
even if it might give the Warriors an edge. And if he can tell himself that the Warriors can win without KD, then I just think he just wouldn't want that. And then you also have to remember, Colin, the Warriors really prioritize building from within with these draft picks. It's the VC mentality. We get something that nobody else wants or doesn't have that much value. We get it on the cheap. We build. So, yes, it's hard. It, they might be losing some guys they need. But I think the mentality from Joe Lake of the owner is, we've got Moody. We've got Kuminga. It's next guy up. It's next generation. Let's go. And that's why they're saying goodbye to maybe some of these role players who have helped them win a championship. Um, it, Draymond Green has obviously been good for my business, the podcast business. And he, I love him. And he's great. Mm -hmm. But it was interesting. He did get a lot of pushback uh, during the finals and the playoffs for doing a podcast, even though I thought it was silly. That's my view. Do you think that ever, you know, after a loss and, and Draymond, because we, we had teams saying they would listen to Draymond's podcast. They were listening to it and, and listening to it for clues on what the Warriors were going to do. Do you think anybody in the walls of the Warriors was uncomfortable with Draymond's public podcasting assertions and proclamations during the run? Oh, certainly. But nothing succeeds like success. I mean, that's what's so great. That's why your guy is on a world tour and he's telling everybody to eat it is because he <laughs> knows that they were all waiting with the knives out to crush him if the Warriors lost while he was podcasting and devoting so much time to podcasting. But what do we do, Colin? We, we play the result in sports. We say, I know you shouldn't have gone for it on fourth down or whatever. We just wait for the result. And we judge you on the basis of it. Uh, I think it's great for him. It's great for you that he has proven. He has broken the podcasting barrier, Colin, and shown that you can win a championship while having a second job in this way. I don't think the Warriors wanted it. I don't think it's what they really were cheering on. But, hey, he was amazing in those last two games. He was essential. And, hey, it's the story of Draymond and the Warriors. He might drive them crazy, but in the end, he's worth it. You know, it, it, I said this. Um, the NBA playoffs ratings were pretty solid. The finals were a mess. Uh, I don't particularly know why. Celtics and Warriors, I thought, were likable. Uh, they're good brands. Some of it, I thought, was America had been locked inside during COVID. The minute kids got out of school in late May, parents just left. You couldn't get on a plane Hotels were full. Now, that's that's my interpretation of why the ratings went down. But you've been on this for years and years. Is that and sometimes you've talked about this and it makes NBA people uncomfortable. The NBA has got a ratings issue uh, and it's not good. College football, NFL, baseball's had a bit of a renaissance. Uh, USFL uh, actually for year one beat, beat beat actually occasionally an NBA game hockey. What do you make of the disastrous rating finals? Because I love the finals, but again, I live in my bubble. That doesn't mean America viewed it. Do you think the league cares about it? How do you explain it? Oh, the league deeply cares about it. You know that. They, they yell at you. And hey, to be clear, the league is going to make a lot more money. When they sign the next TV deal, it will be for a lot more than the last one. But if they were going gangbusters, if they were growing in viewership, then that would be tens of billions of dollars extra into their coffers. So they definitely care. Uh, what do I make of the ratings being solid up until the finals? What I make is this. I think the NBA diehard has not left. So they have a certain floor. But the casual, so many casual fans uh, have abandoned them because you have a dream matchup right there of the Warriors versus the Celtics. Yeah. And it's about half of what you would get for Warriors versus Cavs in 2016, 2017, maybe a little bit more than half. And it's a combination of factors. One of the factors we're seeing, which is that Kevin Durant says, you know what, uh, let me out of here. You know, I chose all my uh, teammates. I chose my coach. I chose my whole situation. I don't want it. I'm gone. I'm loyal to nothing. Uh, fans see that. They're not into it. The load management, I think, has warded some people away. And then this is the one that's the most fraught, even though to me it's the most obvious. It's the one people don't want to admit which is, yes, the politics. Yeah. Even when people agree with the politics, they don't necessarily want it. There was that horrific shooting uh, before the NBA Finals, and much of the ESPN leading coverage was about that. That's something where if you have a certain politics, you're offended by it. And also, even if you agree with the messaging, maybe it's not what you want to be thinking about when you're getting ready for the NBA Finals. Yes, that is also a factor in what has happened. I believe. Yeah, well, a lot of people think sports is an escape. Uh, it isn't for me, but it is for a lot of people. They want to go. 
uh, whether it's uh, to the movie theater, to an NBA or NFL game, and they want to they want to get out of the bad news. They want to get into the fun. Uh, Ethan Strauss has a podcast, House of Strauss. I think it's as good as any podcast on the market. It's great seeing you again, my friend. We'll talk soon. Hi, everybody. Thanks for watching. Subscribe here to get the latest from the show. Also, be sure to check out more of the best clips from The Herd or go watch a few segments from other shows on FS1.